Welcome everyone to our new video on constitutional validity of time limit to avail ITC under GST. As we all will agree that time is the most crucial thing in everyone's life and it has been well said by Miles Davis that time is not the main thing, it is the only thing. In indirect taxation also, government has been following the legacy of providing input tax credit as a benefit to taxpayers with some conditions and restrictions since past regime and that has been continued under GST regime also. So the relevant legal provisions for claiming ITC under GST as they are under section 16, eligibility and conditions for taking ITC. 16.1 provides that a registered person can claim ITC on goods or services which are used or intended to be used in course of furtherance of his business. For claiming such ITC, there are some conditions and restrictions that needs to be strictly fulfilled by taxpayers. And those conditions are provided under section 16.2. Importantly, section 16.2 starts with a non obstant clause. That means that it will override any other provisions in this section, which are against the eligibility of claiming credit. Section 16.4 provides time limit to claim ITC. And as per amended provision, time limit to claim ITC is by November 30th of following financial year or annual return, whichever is earlier. Let us just briefly see the history of ITC timelines under GST. On July 1, 2017, GST was introduced. At that time, time limit was earlier of 3B return of September of succeeding financial year or annual return, whichever is earlier. In December 2018, owing to multiple challenges and glitches on the portal, time limit was extended for financial year 1718 till 3B of March 2019. Then in March 2020, we all faced the unexpected COVID period. And owing to that, the government extended multiple timelines like returns, proceedings, filing of applications, etc. And unfortunately, time limit of claiming ITC was not extended. In the midst of that, the validity of ITC time limit under GST was also challenged in various high courts. In Delhi High Court in the case of Bharti Telemedia and in Gujarat High Court in the case of Surat Makindai. And recently, in January 2022, the time limit was provided as earlier of November 30 of next financial year or annual return. So before just discussing the recent judgment, it is important to note that time limit to claim ITC has been challenged on multiple times in past regime, be it state VAT laws, excise, etc. or in the time of modified credit. So under GST also it was challenged and recently the Andhra Pradesh High Court in case of Tirumalakonda plywoods has dealt this issue. In this case, the petitioner contended many points for alleging time limit of claiming ITC under GST. Petitioner contended that time limit is violative of Article 14, 191G and 300A of the Constitution of India. In a sense that it affects the right to equality, it affects right to carry on business or profession by taxpayer, and also it is against the Article 300A that ITC should be treated as property of uh, by authority of law. Further, petitioner contended that since section 16.2 starts with a non obstant clause, so section 16.4 time limit should be read otherwise. And once the conditions and restrictions which are there under 16.2 are fulfilled, then the time limit of section 16.4 should not be read strictly. And the main eligibility test is passed by virtue of section 16.2. Further, petitioner contended that acceptance of belated 3B with late fee should automatically ignore delay in claiming of ITC by taxpayer. After hearing all the contentions and observations, the courts decided uh, that ITC is not a right. It is a mere concession or a rebate or benefit to taxpayer. Court held that the time limit of claiming ITC is not violative of Article 300A. Article 300A will not be applicable in this case because ITC should not be treated as a property by authority of law. The court held that putting a time limit for claiming ITC is not violative of Article 14 and 19 G in as much as it is not causing any arbitrariness or inequality to the taxpayer and also it is not causing any loss in carrying out business or profession by taxpayer. Even though petitioner contended that he began his business in March 2020 just before lockdown and due to multiple challenges, he could not claim ITC timely. Basis that he contended that 
it is violative of Article 19.1G of the Constitution, but the court rejected this contention. The court held that even if ITC can be considered as a right of taxpayer, that those restrictions and conditions which are there under law are validly imposable. The court further held that Section 16.2 should not be read as notwithstanding any other provision of Section 16. Rather, Section 16.2, which starts with a non obstant clause, should be read as notwithstanding any assertive provision in terms of eligibility of that ITC and not to the overall time limit of claiming ITC. Further, the court held that if this interpretation is taken, then Section 16.4 would automatically become redundant and that the legislature never intended so. So Section 16.2 will not be considered as overriding Section 16.4. Therefore, time limit under Section 16.4 should be strictly adhered separately. The court held that filing of belated return is accepted beyond statutory time limit for various purposes like assessment, verification, etc. So belated return should not automatically mean that, that belated ITC would also be allowed to taxpayer. In our view, the ruling is absolutely correct. The ruling correctly held that ITC is not a right. It is a mere concession or rebate to the taxpayer. And the ITC admissibility which is provided under section 16 of GST law can be very well coupled with conditions and restrictions and those restrictions shall be treated as valid. Importantly, this issue was also uh, discussed in the landmark ruling of Osram Surya in past regime where rule 57G for claiming modified credit was challenged on a particular set of invoices. There the court observed that putting a time limit under law for claiming ITC or modified credit in that case should not be treated as taking away that benefit from the taxpayer. Taxpayer always had the benefit of taking ITC, but yes, that benefit or the right of taking ITC should be exercised in the given time limit only. In that sense, the time limit is valid under law. Reasonable extension was also given in past, specifically for financial year 17-18, where ITC time limit was extended till March uh, 19-3B due to multiple challenges, etc. And again, it is the discussion of government only to extend it or not. And lastly, normally a sufficient time limit is there under law for claiming ITC. Almost eight months are provided by end of financial year to taxpayer for claiming ITC, for finalizing it, for matching it, etc. Uh, important to note that this ruling is will be considered as a pioneer in, um, in experiencing the similar verdicts for the rulings already under challenge. And also it will be important to see that how Apex code under GST will decide the validity of time limit uh, for GST provisions. With this, we come to the end of our video. Thanks for watching.